Seltzer's latest poll. <laughs> and, you know, we've been saying it for some time. It's fascinating. Donald Trump thinks he can talk to about suburbia and the great American dream and 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 talk about trying to keep low income people out of neighborhoods because crime would go up in the women. Oh, the women. Oh, my God. We've got to worrying protect about our the women. women's safety when low income people come in. It's all very uh, racially tinged. And he thinks this 1953 appeal to white suburban voters is going to work. It just predictably seems to be backfiring because it's why white suburban voters started running away from him, you know, after Charlottesville. Yeah, so really interesting thought experiment that I did on Sunday. I went into, like, basically, I, I do truly now believe we have, like, a tribal world where we live in different bubbles. So I went into the Trump bubble. Mm -hmm. I listened to Ben Shapiro. I listened to uh, a tape of uh, Rush Limbaugh. I looked at the top trending stories on Facebook, all of them from right-wing sites, and watched Fox News. It's not just Donald Trump who's talking about this. This is all the the infrastructure of the sort of the modern Republican Party is talking about this. You would think that every city is on fire, that every city is being looted, that Donald Trump is the one man who stands up for law enforcement. And their belief is, and I do think you're right, their belief is that eventually that will get people, even if they won't tell a pollster, get them to vote for Donald Trump because they will be scared stiff by election day. I have no idea if it'll work, but there's no doubt that this is not just Donald Trump anymore. It is the entire infrastructure. And I think it's an infrastructure that most people in the media don't pay that much attention to. And so they don't realize the amplification effect. And by the way, it works both ways. A lot of these conspiracy theories that he was talking about in that Fox News interview, they're pulled from some of the top trending items that move on Facebook. And so there was a great piece that everybody should read that was in the New York Times last week about understanding Facebook. If you put your, your head inside the Facebook machine, most of the stories that travel and get the widest audience tend to come from Ben Shapiro, Franklin Graham, Breitbart, sites and people that most Americans aren't paying attention to, uh, but people on Facebook are, and that is the Trump base. And now the question is, over the next couple of weeks, do we start to see those polls move, either private polls or public polls? So far, we don't. Uh, and I think you're right. So far, you're not seeing success in that strategy. But if you're Donald Trump and the hand you have to play is, I can deal with the coronavirus where we have 180,000 deaths. We're not making that much progress uh, in being able to cure it. And there's a lot of economic devastation that's flowing from it. I could talk about that. Or I could go to Kenosha and I could say I'm the law enforcement guy. From a political standpoint, you're going to choose the law enforcement guy approach, and that's what he is all in on, and we'll see if it works. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and Shauna, uh, there is that bubble that uh, Jim Vandehei is talking about. It's also a bubble that Mitt Romney and uh, people who supported him in 2012 stayed comfortably inside of, believing Gallup polls that had them up 11 points, believing every report on Fox News. I remember even election night, I'm sure you do too, in 2012, you still had people on Fox News uh, insisting uh, that Mitt Romney was going to win and that things were looking better in Ohio. And uh, the Romneys were in shock that night, as were many people, because they were inside that bubble. Well, that bubble has only uh, become smaller and intensified even more and actually gotten far more outlandish, especially if you look at the crazed conspiracy theories that the president is now spitting out mm. that he finds on Facebook from QAnon members. Yeah, and sort of what's interesting about Jim talking about living in that bubble for a day is we also know the president does live in that media bubble because that media diet, whether it's Fox News or Ben Shapiro or whatever we want to talk about, also complements him on how he is talking about law and order. So if he sees this on TV, he sees the people that uh, he likes because they are saying good things about him, saying this is the information that we want. We want to talk about, quote unquote, law and 
and order, whether that is actually a sort of a racist coded term or not. And we we want you to do that. And if he does it, then his ego is fed by the fact that he's doing it. And so it just keeps repeating. And, you know, taking a look closer at those numbers that that Mika was talking about from the uh, Ann Seltzer poll, you know, I saw that 39 percent, that there are 39 percent of people who uh, approve of how President Trump has worked on coronavirus and race relations. So that's his base. 39 percent, that's his base. He knows that this is working with them, and he is not going to stop. And from a purely political point of view, the things he said while he was in Kenosha yesterday, when asked directly about systemic racism, when asked about, you know, is there a way that we can try to bring people together, that kind of thing, that... Those, the people who want him to talk about that, the people who are marching in the streets, he also knows most of those people are not voting for him. I mean, the people who are peacefully marching, wanting to talk about police reform, wanting to talk about systemic racism, wanting to hit these things on the head that are, that are deep ingrained problems within America, he already knows they're not voting for him, but he knows that the people who are part of that media diet, that loop, that 39%, those people are going to vote for him. So that is what he's going to keep talking about it. Jonathan was right. This was a political trip. And, and, and he is doing, from a political point of view, what he thinks he needs to do to do the one thing he seems to actually care about, which is winning re 